Yo, what is going on, Comfy Gang? It's your boy, Company, and today I want to talk about something that might seem kind of random, but I think it's pretty pretty relevant to needs, first of all, and um, secondly, I think it's something that we all pretty much go through, and it's basically the phenomenon of accelerating time. And you might be wondering uh, what I mean when I say this, because isn't a second a second? Isn't an hour an hour? And isn't a day in a day? Isn't a day just a day? And so on. And while this is technically the case in a physical sense, um, it isn't always so, uh, because I guess, you know, I don't really understand it well myself, but you know, time appears to be relative. And, you know, firstly, uh, objects seem to move through time differently depending on their speed or maybe their mass or their size or whatever, their, their volume. I have no fucking clue, honestly, but um, well, that's talking about the physics of it. And while that's not necessarily what I'm getting at, what I'm getting at is more of the experience is more about the experience of time and that time seems to be uh, accelerating for um, everybody basically as you get older and even more so for needs which i'm going to get into later in the video so yeah i guess the reason for accelerating time um i think it has to do with growing up and um, the reason growing up, uh, I guess, correlates with your experience of time accelerating is that, you know, as a kid, um, you know, everything in the world is basically new. So when you're first born into the world, um, you know, you're pretty much bombarded from every direction with a near infinite amount of stimulus and your brain is basically less developed than a puppy's so um well your brain basically has no way of i guess you know organizing all this information so you're basically living in the moment all the time and because of this you're just living in the moment and responding you know almost intuitively to things and you know everything is brand new so by default it's interesting and um because it's interesting um well time i guess you know seems to move slower because you're always just stuck in the present moment and you're stuck focusing on what's in front of you and you know this phenomenon appears to last for i'm it, it, obviously it starts to slow down as your brain begins to develop more and more, but um, I feel like it lasts for a while because I remember as a kid, you know, I feel like the days used to last forever. For example, waiting for the bell, for waiting for the bell to ring for school to end. Or for example, when I remember, um, you know, I don't know, when I was how much happier a uh, child and you know playing video games with my with my cousins when they were small or maybe playing with friends in the playground i feel like those little moments of uh, of happiness seem to last forever and at the same time you know yeah anyways i forgot what i was going to say but anyways um yeah so the reason why this seems to last for a while like this this slowing down or i guess the slowing down of time or this natural flow of time seems to, to to remain slow for a good portion of your early life is because, you know, as you're growing up, your brain is constantly developing. And because of this, you know, even though you might be, um, you might be exposed to the exact same stimulus or stimuli, things in your environment over and over again, um, because your brain is uh, constantly uh, progressing, you're building more connections and you're getting rid of useless ones. Um, you're basically experiencing the exact same things in brand new ways. And because of that, they remain interesting because, you know, you, you might uh, experience a person in a new way, uh, realize something, uh, you know, come to some epiphany about something 
or um, you know, begin to notice patterns in the way people act, or um, you know, in music, you know, notice certain I don't know whatever it is. But because of that, you're because of that, these uh, things around you that surround you basically remain interesting, and it's not necessarily whether they make you happy or not because you know i think regardless because i feel like um if something is a uh, i think it's especially when something is emotionally negative that um your brain basically will direct your attention or direct its attention toward it even more than something that makes you happy although happy things that make you happy or comfy or whatever also direct your attention pretty strongly but not as strong as negative things because we have this negativity bias basically um i think it's been pretty well studied but um yeah so we have this negative negativity bias and that th that's why i feel like your teenage years also continue to last uh seem to last forever because you know you're starting to open up to this whole new world of social hierarchies and interpersonal dynamics, like how you interact with people and you're starting to, um, your body's starting to grow. So that's also constantly changing too. And that's just another source of novelty and interestingness. Um, and that basically lasts and lasts, but eventually you start to, you start to hit a, um, I don't know, a sort of vanishing point, not a vanishing point, a sort of, you start to cross this threshold where, you know, your brain is almost reaching its maturity. And as it does this, um, you know, you know, things no longer start to become new to you because, you know, your body is almost at its peak by then. And more importantly, your mind is um, basically at a point where it can it's the rate at which you're starting to discover new things about the world is starting to slow down because um yeah your mind is reaching maturity and as a result um your mind sort of shifts away from you know i guess see i guess from a from a what's it called a subjective viewpoint your mind starts to shift away from this um, this sense of novelty and wonder and awe about the world and you know instead because you've probably experienced pretty pretty much everything that you're going to experience for the rest of your life uh, you know in in the most in all of the ways which your brain is capable of experiencing them um, your brain starts to move towards, um, you know, automating all of these things because basically your brain is designed to be as efficient as possible. And um, so because of that, it begins to, you know, segment the world to compartment, to fuck, to compartmentalize it. And, um, you know, I guess break it down into these little nuggets of uh, information, uh, these little chunks of information and um and it not only does this in terms of knowledge but also like your responses to it so that um you know it essentially begins to automate your entire life your entire being and that's why things like habits are so hard to break out of because they're essentially these little programs that your brain has you know created for you has structured for you programmed for you based on your past experiences but because of these programs, you start to move through life um, through autopilot. And when you're in autopilot, you're basically unconscious. Uh, because if you really think about it, most people, especially when they're older, are living their lives in this constant state of, you know, just automatic thinking and automatic behavior. So like, for example, let's say you feel hunger in your stomach. What is your first instinct? Um, it's to go grab food uh, and eat it, food that you're craving probably in the moment. And um, it takes conscious effort to fight this, but most people never do this. Instead, they just follow the urge. They let their 
uncon almost unconscious drives run them, run their thoughts, run their behaviors, and they remain unconscious. And in this, it's in the state of unconsciousness uh, that um, you know time begins to accelerate because it's almost like you're asleep, but you're not really asleep. Like think about it: when you're asleep, you kind of just blink, and then it's the morning. But several hours have passed, and while it isn't exactly the case um, that this hap it doesn't ha happen exactly like this while you're consciously awake, but you know time can fly pretty fast when you're just in this constant lull of repetitive behavior, and um, yeah, so because of that, time seems to you know move faster and faster, and that's why as you get older. Um, you know, there are less and less novel things that can pull you out of that automatic, um, I guess, what's it called? Automatic, um, you know, way of living. And, you know, obviously that's why when you find something that is interesting, it's usually something that, you know, is novel to you, I guess. Not all the time, not not uh it's not like that in all cases like obviously we each have our preferences we're each partial to certain types of things or maybe it's that we're you know maybe it's that we're particularly attracted to um activities or you know stimuli which um our brain is kind of like it's like kind of like on the edge of understanding for our brains and because of that when you're at this edge of you know understanding um i don't know if i'm making any sense right now but when you're at this edge of understanding where it's not too bizarre where you know your brain just kind of just shuts off and ignores it and it's not too familiar that you know it's just kind of like taken as a given by your brain um i guess you find it interesting and it sort of pulls you into the present moment so when you find like a movie that you really like or an anime or you know eat something that you've taken that you taste something for the first time that you find really good it kind of pulls you back into that moment of you know presentness and you feel good it may it definitely feels good most of the time obviously this is also true with traumatic um things traumatic experiences or negative experiences but because um but because you know we tend to avoid those um, we get used to negative things pretty fast. I don't, I don't, okay, I don't know honestly why this is, but I guess, you know, it seems to be positive things that pull us out of this sort of, um, I don't know, whatever lull that we're in, this sort of sleep, this sort of daydream that we're in. And, you know, it makes us happy again. And not happy, I don't know what I'm saying. It makes, makes us present again and for that for a brief moment time slows down but um i guess there's only so many things that can do that before um you know you start to um experience everything the world has to offer and because you've experienced everything in the world because you experience more and more things as you get older time seems to move faster and faster because there are less and less things that can pull you out of that daydream that you're in and i guess that's um exactly why time appears to accelerate for pretty much everybody not just needs but wages but i think it is particularly the phenomenon is particularly strong for needs because um well needs and um i guess you know I, I guess hickeys especially like hickey kamoris but even needs because i feel like most needs live lives that are basically identical to hickeys um well there are for example let's take me for example i'm in this basement like 90 percent of the time and when i'm not i'm upstairs eating in the kitchen dining room area and apart from that i rarely ever leave the house um i only leave for maybe certain things like maybe in the past i used to go to the gym uh, i plan to go back to the mma stuff you know 
very soon, but I still have. But anyways, um, yeah, so it's like we're living in this exact same environment for prolonged periods of time. And the chances of experiencing something novel, um, something new, something interesting inside of this environment only happens, um, you know, basically in our computers, right? Because we're mostly just accessing media uh, because I feel like that's what most needs primarily consume. And, um, and basically because we're constantly in front of our screens, we're constantly just stuck consuming the same stuff. It kind of accelerates the process at which we experience the what the world has to offer because um you know or at least what we can experience because basically um we're experiencing the world through movies and videos and mu i guess audio music whatever uh video games and because we're just constantly at it for like i don't know tens of hours at a time and um eating the same food we're basically um deprived of any novelty that might come from let's say something like traveling or you know eating other types of interesting cuisine or meeting new people because i guess each new person you meet especially in real life is almost like a puzzle i'm not gonna that's kind of sounds like messed up not like a puzzle but you know they're like for your brain, it's a puzzle to solve, basically. Like, because that's literally what other people are to your brain. It's a, they're puzzles, whether you like it or not. Um, well, everything is a puzzle to your brain. But what I'm saying is that, um, you know, there's only so many puzzles that you're you that you're exposed to living the neat lifestyle, and because of that, time seems to accelerate even faster for needs. Whereas, at least you know, wages. They do live pretty repetitive lives, so I guess, you know, the argument could be made that if you're a wagey in some dead in some dead end job, then perhaps time also will accelerate at a pretty similar rate for you. But I feel like having to navigate the social world, as stressful as it is, is probably so much more stimulating than just staying in front of your computer screen all day and consuming media that because of that i guess even wages and dead-end jobs probably experience time a little bit slower um than the average meat does because i don't know i don't know about you guys but for me the last three to four years have basically gone by in a flash and i can pretty much remember the very few key events that have happened in that time as if they were like yesterday and I feel like I haven't moved anywhere. It's almost like I've been stuck in the same place, but time has basically flown past me. So is needs experiencing time uh, faster um, a good thing or a bad thing? Um, yes and no, depending on your mindset. I know a lot of needs are very very depressed and very very suicidal so i guess from their perspective um well it's maybe arguably a good thing because you get to experience the suffering of this world um you know it's not prolonged because time is just flying by faster and faster but it's also a bad thing because it means that it's kind of a sign that you're just living your life more and more automatically and you're falling deeper and deeper into all of these patterns that have put you here in the first place and because of that it kind of means that you're more unconscious getting more and more unconscious and the chances of you ever breaking out of this cycle of you know just repetitiveness and misery and this basically you know, slow crawl towards death um, and meaninglessness and nihilism and suffering, the chances of you breaking out of that just become slimmer and slimmer. 
as time goes by, as time accelerates. So um, yeah, I guess that is pretty much all I have to say about time accelerating. So anyways, I hope you guys found this interesting. Um, I really need to talk more consistently so I don't, you know, stutter as much or I don't know. I feel like I'm pre I feel pretty, I don't know, jittery, maybe because it's kind of cold too, but also that I'm just not used to um, talking this long. I really need to get into the habit of it. But anyways, um, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below if you enjoy this video. And this is Company signing out.